Hello, everyone. My name is Abigail, and I'm excited to share a story with you that's both intriguing and a bit heartbreaking. Before we dive in, let me set the stage by saying that this tale does have its darker moments. But rest assured, there's a sense of justice in the end, as my not-so-kind mother-in-law, Lori, eventually faces the consequences of her actions. My journey began when I met my husband, David, during our college years. We were both studying in a foreign country, which was thrilling in itself. From David's descriptions, his mother, Lori, sounded like an incredible woman. Having raised David on her own after the tragic loss of his dad in a car accident when David was just a teen, I couldn't help but admire her strength and resilience. This accident wasn't just any incident. It was a profound tragedy that marked David deeply, both physically and emotionally. Despite the physical injuries healing, the psychological scars remained, and David would often express his gratitude for his mother's unwavering support through his recovery. In David's stories, Lori was portrayed as a warrior, a single mother who overcame adversity to raise a remarkable young man. So, naturally, I was filled with respect and admiration for her before we even met. However, the reality of Lori didn't quite match the picture David had painted. Our first meeting with Lori was something I had eagerly anticipated, given everything David had told me. I greeted her with warmth, expressing my admiration for her resilience and strength. Lori's response was confident and somewhat intimidating, warning me of her formidable nature and her struggles in raising David single-handedly. As the conversation unfolded, I praised David, mentioning his successful career and his caring nature, both of which I believed reflected well on Lori's upbringing. But her response left me stunned. Lori dismissed David's accomplishments as mere obligations and blamed him for his father's death, suggesting that if David hadn't insisted on the trip with his dad, her husband would still be alive. This accusation was both shocking and deeply unfair, casting a shadow over what I had imagined our relationship would be like. Lori's harsh words about David, implying that he was somehow responsible for his father's tragic accident, were incredibly hurtful and unjust. I was at a loss for how to respond to such cruel and baseless blame placed on David. It was clear from that moment that my initial admiration for Lori was misplaced, and the complexity of our future interactions had just begun to unfold. In simpler terms, I entered this family story expecting to meet a hero, but was met with a narrative filled with pain, misunderstanding, and the harsh reality that sometimes those we look up to can carry the most unexpected shadows. During a particularly revealing dinner, I experienced a moment that opened my eyes to the complexities of my new family dynamics. As we sat together, Lori, my mother-in-law, reminisced about the loss of her husband, subtly reinforcing the guilt she placed on David, my husband, for his father's death. David, with a heavy heart, accepted the blame, apologizing for insisting on the trip that led to the tragedy. Lori then turned to me, warning me about David's priorities, making it clear that he would always put her first due to his sense of duty and responsibility towards her. This interaction was a shock to me, watching David accept blame and Lori emphasizing her importance in his life over dinner. Over the next four days, staying with Lori provided me with deeper insights into their relationship. Lori's relentless blaming of David for past events and her manipulation to keep him under her influence became painfully apparent. It seemed she had engineered her life to ensure David's support by continuously making him feel indebted to her. Witnessing this dynamic, I felt an overwhelming sympathy for David, who seemed trapped by guilt and obligation. One evening, I attempted to discuss this unhealthy pattern with David, hoping to offer him a different perspective. I urged him to see that his mother's accusations were manipulative and unfair, aiming to control him by exploiting his guilt over his father's accident. David, however, resigned to his sense of duty, insisted that he bore responsibility for his father's death, and that caring for his mother was a promise he couldn't break. Desperate recognizing the manipulation, David felt compelled by a promise to his late father to support Lori, no matter the cost to himself. Despite my efforts to help David see the manipulation for what it was, he remained steadfast in his loyalty to Lori, convinced that he owed her everything for the loss of his father. Lori, fully aware of my attempts to change David's perspective, cleverly worked to sow discord between David and me, ensuring her control remained unchallenged. This entire ordeal left me grappling with complex emotions. My initial respect for Lori crumbled as I came to realize the extent of her manipulation and control over David. 
The situation painted a picture of a deeply entangled relationship fueled by guilt, duty, and manipulation, challenging my understanding of family dynamics and testing the bonds of my relationship with David. Despite the challenges, I remained determined to find a way to support David, hoping that one day he would see the truth for himself and break free from the manipulative grip that held him back from true healing and happiness. Marrying David was a choice I made wholeheartedly because he truly was an exceptional person. His love was genuine, and his vulnerability only drew me closer. We committed to each other, and soon after, David went the extra mile, buying us a lavish mansion to start our new life together. However, our joy was short-lived. Lori, David's mother, arrived unannounced at our doorstep, bags in tow, proclaiming her intention to live with us. Her justification? She felt entitled to David's support and our home because, in her view, David was responsible for her husband's death. This notion alone was enough to boil my blood. Lori wasted no time making herself at home, chastising David for not inviting her sooner. David, ever the dutiful son, reluctantly agreed to her staying with us. He was already bearing the financial burden of her expenses, so this was just another step for him. However, for me, it was the beginning of a nightmare. Lori's presence became toxic as she started to poison David's mind against me falsely accusing me of being a gold digger, even though I contributed to our household and maintained my job. After a year filled with arguments and unbearable tension, I reached my breaking point and left. I found refuge in a friend's vacant apartment and presented David with an ultimatum. I made it clear to David that living with his mother was untenable. Her behavior was not just overbearing but abusive, and she was actively trying to drive a wedge between us. I couldn't stand another moment in that toxic environment, especially when David seemed unable to confront his mother or protect our relationship from her manipulations. David's response was one of helplessness. He felt trapped by a sense of obligation towards his mother, blaming himself for her loneliness. Despite his desire to support me, he was at a loss on how to challenge his mother's behavior. It was at this moment of desperation that I suggested a divorce might be our only solution. The thought of ending our marriage was heartbreaking, but living in the shadow of Lori's manipulation was unbearable. I needed David to realize the severity of the situation and make a definitive choice. Either we would stand together as a couple and set healthy boundaries, or I would have to walk away for good. The turmoil had taken its toll, and I was prepared to do whatever was necessary to escape the constant strife Lori brought into our lives. The prospect of staying with someone unable to defend me was disheartening. Yet when I voiced my intentions to leave, David's reaction was one of sheer panic. He pleaded with me, explaining that he couldn't bear to evict his mother due to a promise made to his late father. Despite his constraints, David proposed an alternative. He would secure a new home for us, even if it meant selling his possessions. I was skeptical. As much as I desired to escape his mother's influence, I couldn't justify putting us in a precarious financial situation. David, determined, offered a compromise. He would cover the down payment on a new home and manage the mortgage, ensuring I wouldn't have to suffer his mother's toxicity. He assured me that this would minimize the drama and promised a gradual distancing from his mother. His earnest plea and the promise of a peaceful life swayed me, and I decided to take a leap of faith, albeit with reservations about Lori's interference. Starting anew wasn't easy. Lori reacted dramatically to David's decision to move, but he managed to calm her by ensuring she could stay in her beloved home and by promising a monthly allowance. Meanwhile, I stayed apart, watching David's efforts to fulfill his promise. Only when he had secured our new home and began mortgage payments did I believe in his commitment. However, the peace was short-lived. Lori, unable to let go, confronted us at our new home. Accusing me of returning to David's life only to further my interests and labeling me a gold digger. Her accusations were harsh and unwarranted. This time, David stood firm, defending our marriage and asserting that the decision to buy a new home was his alone. For the first time, he confronted his mother, warning her not to jeopardize his support with her unfounded accusations and manipulative behavior. Lori's face went pale as David asserted his stance marking a turning point in our relationship and setting the foundation for a new chapter, one where David and I hoped to build a life together free from undue influence and manipulation. When David confronted his mother, it was a moment I never anticipated. It might seem minor to others, but for me, it was monumental. 
I understood the immense courage it took for him to stand up to Lori. Predictably, Lori's reaction was to play the victim, sobbing and claiming David's defiance was cruel. Amidst her theatrics, I chose to remain silent, not wanting to provide her any ammunition to portray me as the antagonist once more. David, undeterred, subtly warned her about the potential loss of her monthly allowance if she persisted in her disruptive behavior. This tactic seemed to work, quieting Lori for the time being. Lori's departure left David apologizing profusely for the upheaval caused by her words. He expressed concern over the possibility of me leaving him after such turmoil. Witnessing his distress saddened me deeply, reinforcing my resolve that changes were necessary for our relationship to move forward. Acknowledging David's stand, I expressed my gratitude, emphasizing the need for further adjustments to ensure the stability of our relationship. David, eager to hear my thoughts, assured me of his willingness to do whatever was necessary to ensure our happiness. This gave me the confidence to voice my suggestions. I propose that we seek therapy, both individually and as a couple. This would not only aid in mending our relationship, but also assist David in unlearning the guilt and manipulative tactics instilled by Lori from a young age. David agreed. Recognizing that his difficulty in confronting his mother stemmed from deep-seated issues that only professional help could address. Next, I addressed the financial strain of our current living situation, suggesting a pause on the Mortgage payments for our new house. David, initially shocked, insisted on continuing the payments as a gesture of his commitment to our marriage. I reassured him that his actions already demonstrated his dedication, but I wanted us to make a statement to the world about our unity and strength as a couple. This conversation marked a turning point for us, laying the groundwork for healing and growth. David's readiness to seek therapy and consider my suggestions showed his commitment to our relationship and to breaking free from the unhealthy patterns of his past. Together, we embarked on a path of recovery, determined to build a future based on mutual respect, understanding, and love, away from the shadows of manipulation and guilt. Defying the stereotype of a gold digger, I was determined to contribute equally to our shared home. David had already made the down payment, and I decided to take responsibility for the mortgage payments. Despite David's protests and his generous offer to put my name on the deed without any financial contribution from my side, I refused. I was well aware of the narrative it would feed Lori and others who might doubt my intentions. My goal was clear, to pay the mortgage and, in due time, officially co-own the house with David. After much discussion, David reluctantly agreed to my plan. From the following month, I began handling the mortgage payments. Fast forward three years, life in our new home was blissful. David and I flourished in our marriage, largely unbothered by Lori's attempts to disrupt our peace. Thanks to therapy, David overcame the guilt his mother had burdened him with, and we enjoyed our lives together, with Lori becoming nothing more than a distant nuisance. However, our happiness was shattered when David was diagnosed with a rare disease, leaving him with just a few months. The time following his diagnosis was indescribably painful, but we cherished every moment we had left together. David passed away four months into his diagnosis, leaving a void in my life that words fail to capture. Lori wasted no time showing her true colors after David's passing. She appeared at our doorstep, claiming ownership of our house, based on a supposed promise David made to leave the house to her in his will. Her audacity to claim the house as hers, mere days after David's death, ignited a fury within me. But her words struck fear into my heart. In the whirlwind of our lives, David and I had neglected to add my name to the deed, leaving the house solely in his name. Lori's claim, though horrifying, was grounded in a harsh reality that David and I had overlooked the legal formalities of ensuring our shared ownership was legally documented. Now, faced with Lori's bold assertion and the omission of my name from the deed, I found myself on the precipice of a legal and emotional battle for what David and I had built together. Struggling to comprehend the possibility that David could have left me in such a precarious position felt like a betrayal, yet I held on to hope until the will was disclosed. The atmosphere was charged with tension during David's funeral, partly due to the palpable animosity between Lori and me. Lori's performative grief, punctuated by smirks thrown my way, tested my patience, but I chose to focus on mourning. David quietly, avoiding any conflict on such a somber day. 
the moment of truth arrived with the reading of David's will, a session that promised to unveil the future of the home I had invested in. To my initial despair, David had named Lori as the beneficiary of our new house. Lori's gloating in that moment was unbearable, asserting David's allegiance to her above all. However, her triumph was short-lived. As the lawyer continued, it became evident that Lori had celebrated too soon, missing the critical details that followed. David's will cleverly delineate the distribution of his properties, much to Lori's dismay. The smaller house, recently acquired, was left to Lori, complete with its ongoing mortgage obligations, a fact she had ignored in her haste to gloat. Meanwhile, the larger house, the very one Lori had arrogantly claimed as hers, was rightfully bequeathed to me. David's strategic planning ensured that Lori would need to vacate the larger home and assume the financial responsibilities of the smaller one. The revelation left Lori dumbfounded, her earlier confidence evaporating as she grasped the reality of David's final decisions. Her protests and accusations of deceit were promptly dismissed by the lawyer, who stood by the legitimacy of the will. David had orchestrated a posthumous maneuver that not only secured my rightful inheritance, but also served as a fitting counter to Lori's greed and manipulation. Lori's disbelief and accusations did nothing to change the legal outcome. David, in his wisdom, had ensured that justice was served, leaving Lori to confront the consequences of her actions and securing for me a semblance of vindication. This twist in David's will not only protected my interests, but also underscored his deep understanding of the dynamics at play, offering me a final gesture of support and love from beyond the grave. Refusing to engage further with Lori's antics, the lawyer assured her he would provide a copy of the will for her scrutiny. Despite her immediate declaration to verify the contents herself, the lawyer's annoyance was evident as he complied. The document confirmed everything he had outlined. My husband had masterfully turned the tables on Lori in what seemed his final stand against her manipulative ways. This act wasn't just a mere twist of fate. It was a deliberate move by David to assert justice from beyond a move that vindicated both his and my positions. Lori's reaction to the reading was nothing short of theatrical. Her denial turned into hysteria, accusing everyone in the room of conspiring against her. The lawyer maintained his composure, reaffirming the legitimacy and solidity of the will, meticulously crafted by David a month before his passing. Lori's threats to contest the will and sue me were met with a reminder from the lawyer about the will's ironclad nature, effectively silencing her with the realization that any legal battle would be fought on her dime. The mention of the discontinuation of her allowance struck a chord of panic in Lori. Accustomed to David's financial support, she had not anticipated the possibility of being left without a safety net. Her entitlement crumbled when the lawyer clarified that without a specific clause for an allowance in the will, she had no claim to any financial support especially since David's assets were now rightfully mine. Lori's meltdown escalated as she confronted the reality of her situation, her dramatic display failing to elicit any sympathy from me. As she lay on the floor, consumed by her despair, I exited the meeting with a sense of closure, leaving Lori to grapple with the consequences of her actions. In the weeks that followed, Lori's desperation to overturn David's will led her on a futile quest for legal assistance, draining her finances in the process. Meanwhile, I took legal steps to reclaim my property, serving her with an eviction notice. Faced with the loss of her home and financial support, Lori resorted to pleading and manipulative tears, attempting to sway my decision. However, the line had been drawn. David's will not only ensured Lori faced the repercussions of her greed and manipulation, but also secured my future, freeing me from the burden of her toxicity. Lori's attempts to undermine my resolve only reinforced my decision to move forward, honoring David's legacy by upholding the terms of his will and starting anew, unburdened by the past. After shutting the door in her face, I started living with a friend and eventually moved into the big house once Lori was pushed out. She ended up in a small house, burdened with a mortgage she couldn't afford. Without any personal savings or job, she was forced to sell it quickly. Losing a lot of money since the house wasn't fully paid off, she barely scraped together enough to last her a year. Watching from my new home, I saw Lori's downfall firsthand. In less than a year, her poor decisions left her without a home and money. When she came back to me, 
trying to pull at my heartstrings by mentioning what her son, my husband, would have wanted, I couldn't help but remind her of his actual wishes. She was speechless, clearly out of options. It's funny how things turn around. Karma did its job. I bumped into her recently while shopping. She's working as a sales associate and acted as if we were strangers, which was fine by me. Rumor has it she's now sharing a place with six others. It seems she's getting what she deserves. As for me, I'm enjoying my life in the big house, cherishing the memories of my husband, happy and at peace with being on my own. It's a stark contrast to the chaos Lori brought into our lives, and I'm grateful for the quiet.